This episode of Because Science is brought to you by Zillow. Find your way home. <laughs> the lightsaber, a more elegant weapon for a more civilized age. It's able to exist in its own galaxy because there aren't other weapons that render it completely obsolete. So what if a galaxy far, far away clashed with our own right now? Could a lightsaber block bullets? Since we started covering lightsabers so heavily, many of you, like at Clan D-O-O Play, have asked me this question. A lightsaber may be able to block blaster bolts and other lightsabers in the movies, but they are of a similar fiction. Would a lightsaber be able to block real metal bullets, or would the weapon be like bringing a knife to a gunfight? First, what is a lightsaber? Well, if you've seen the show before, you know that our mostly canonical conception of a lightsaber is this. It is a ring of plasma, it would be more tightly coiled to look like a single blade, contained by helical magnetic fields, like the ones that experimental fusion reactors use. This setup gives us two potential blockers. The first is deflection via magnetism, and the second is blocking a bullet before it gets to you by vaporizing it turning it into vapor, hot metal bullet vapor, with hot, hot plasma. First, let's try magnetism. I think we all have in the back of our heads that if a magnetic field is sufficiently strong, it can radically affect the path of a projectile. I blame pop culture for this, specifically James Bond. But in reality, deflecting a bullet with magnetism would be incredibly difficult. The first reason is that the materials that most bullets are made out of aren't magnetic. See, nothing's happening. Another is that bullets move extremely fast, meaning that there's a very short amount of time for any magnetic field to affect their path. And last reason is that bullets don't have an overall charge. They're neutral. This makes it even harder for them to interact with electromagnetism. But even with all those problems, we can still do the math. Well, I mean, physics students from the University of Leicester can do the math for us. It's an older study, but it checks out. Based on the mass and velocity of a 9mm bullet, the most commonly used bullet, the students calculated that a magnetic field strength would need to be on the order of a quintillion Tesla to curve a bullet using magnetic fields. This is trillions of times more magnetism than has ever been created in a lab here in our galaxy. It's just too much. Even if a lightsaber blade could be this magnetic, whenever a Jedi turned it on, objects would start flying at her if they were ferromagnetic from all over the place. It would be like, be like Empire, and it would be really annoying all the time until you turn it off. Come on, come on, turn it off. Until, fine now. If magnetism is out, what about blocking bullets with the plasma by evaporating them? Now this is a question of energy. Does a lightsaber, laser sword, laser sword. lightsaber put out enough energy to vaporize a bullet in the time that the bullet is in contact with a lightsaber's blade? To be consistent, we're gonna assume that a lightsaber puts out 35 million watts of power based on the scene in The Phantom Menace where Qui-Gon Jinn easily plunges his entire lightsaber blade into a blast door. In the, in the previous episode, we that's what we did. And like those physics students, I'm also going to use a 9 millimeter bullet moving towards a lightsaber at around 350 meters per second. Now, if a lightsaber's blade is maybe 2.5 centimeters in diameter, that means a very, very short contact time. Just 70 microseconds. Now we need how much energy it takes to fully vaporize a bullet. Like the physics students, I'm also going to use a 9 millimeter bullet, which is made mostly of lead. And lead has a melting point of 328 degrees Celsius and a boiling point, because we want to get it into a vapor, of 1750 degrees Celsius. But it also takes energy to heat the bullet up to those temperatures. When lead is in its solid state, it takes 125 joules to heat up one kilogram of lead one degree Kelvin. But when it's in its liquid state, it takes 155 joules to heat up one kilogram of lead one degree Kelvin. 
Oh, okay, almost there. Lastly, we need how much energy it takes for lead to change phases from solid to liquid and liquid to gas, latent heat of fusion and latent heat of vaporization. So to change it from a solid to a liquid, you need to input, here we go, 23 kilojoules of energy per kilogram of lead. And if you wanna change all that newly liquid lead into vaporized hot deadly gas lead, then that takes 178 kilojoules per mole of Kelvin. Now we're ready. Time to use the math. Use the force, Kyle. Let go, Kyle. No, feelings are dumb. Based on our assumptions about the bullet and its temperatures, it would take just over 9,000 joules of energy to vaporize it before it got to your face. Does a lightsaber put out that much energy in just 70 microseconds? Does it? Does it? Does it? This is important! Not it does. <laughs> In just 70 microseconds, a lightsaber with our power output puts out around 2,500 joules, which means that no, our lightsaber does not have enough energy to vaporize a bullet before it gets to you. But it does change the bullet. 2,500 joules just happens to be enough to melt the bullet not vaporize it, meaning that if you tried to block it on the other side of the block would be liquid hot lead. If a Jedi was teleported to Earth and suddenly found herself in a gunfight, every blocked bullet would be nearly instantaneously transformed into stupid hot goo. I mean, I guess that's not as bad as being hit with an intact bullet, but still having liquid lead splashed on your skin can't be a go! This is, this is, this is what love on most of our must feel like! Ah, oh, pat me, save me! I killed you, but not really! Why couldn't they save her? What, if they had the technology to give him a fully replicate, full, a fine hand, why couldn't they just give her a cesarean section? She was a queen. They, do, they can't do that for ladies? Oh, sorry. We can give your stupid, dumb, sand-hating husband a hand, but we can't, we can't deal with your lady parts? Before I did the math, I just assumed that a lightsaber would have enough energy to turn any and all incoming bullets into less deadly hot metal vapor, but that's not the case. It turns out, at least with our assumptions, that a lightsaber is in the middle ground between vaporizing and melting, not the high ground. In fact, as defined by the US military as having a muzzle velocity of, of course, you know, between 1,000 and 1,500 meters per second, a lightsaber would turn almost any small arms fire into hot metal spray directed at you. Is this blocking? Ugh, I don't really know. The lightsaber is definitely doing something, but a surprise! We just did this joke and it's not funny anymore. So could a lightsaber block bullets? Probably not. The magnetic field strength it would need around its plasma is prohibitively powerful and it's not putting out enough energy in its plasma to vaporize bullets before they reach your face and turn them into just hot metal puffs of smoke, which would still be crazy dangerous. You'd try to block bullets, but they'd pass right through and turn into liquid lead and cover your face and probably kill you like you're some dumb Targaryen. There is good news for Jedis though. Because magnetic fields interact with charged particles, which plasma contains, they could still probably block blaster bolts from blasters in their own galaxy just fine without too much of a magnetic requirement. So in this galaxy, don't bring a plasmatana to a gunfight, because science. Thank you so much for watching, Tommy. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at SciFile, where you can suggest ideas for future episodes, like the one that created this episode, and on Instagram and Facebook, where I'm now posting mini episodes of each show, like the one I did today. And if you want more of my silliness, you can check out me and my colleague Dan Casey, our new show, Muscari! where we, we are very silly about a very serious man. And if you want even more 
higher quality content from me, you can subscribe to Alpha and go to projectalpha.com right now for a free trial to see my new show called The Space Program, which is a lot of fun and it was super hard, so I hope you like it. And guess what? We now have surprise Tish lightsaber shirts. We got these because you nerds wanted them so bad. So go buy them and you can see, it's you start on one side and then you flip it around and it's, it's the gag. You get it. Also, I use a lot of Ultra Saber uh, lightsabers in these episodes, so give me more. <laughs> Thanks again to Zillow for sponsoring today's show. With millions of photos of homes for sale and for rent, historical pricing data, and other tools for home buyers, Zillow, find your way home. Did you ever hear of the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise? No. I thought not. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. It's a Sith legend. Darth Plagueis was a dark lord of the Sith, so powerful and so wise, he could use the Force to influence the Metachlorians to create life. He had such a knowledge of the dark side, he could even keep the ones he cared about from dying. He could actually save people from death. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural. What happened to him? He became so powerful, the only thing he was afraid of was losing his power, which eventually, of course, he did. Unfortunately, he taught his apprentice everything he knew, and his apprentice killed him in his sleep. Ironic. He could save others from death, but not himself. Is it possible to learn this power? Not from a Jedi, 